M A X You can see here that my Apple IIc is chugging out commands and I wonder where could it be sending them? Well, it is in fact controlling this 3D printer and at the moment I've got a pen taped to the extruder bit on the 3D printer and it's plotting out uh, some pen plotter art. And as far as I know, um, this is the first time that a 3D printer has actually been controlled from an Apple II, which is really exciting. And it's been a very fun kind of tinkery project to get this to work. So I'd love to talk to you about how I actually connected the Apple IIc to the 3D printer and also about why and what I hope to do now that I can connect a 3D printer to an Apple II. And another thing I'd like to add is even though I'm using the 3D printer as a 2D plotter here because that was my particular interest for this project, I can't see any reason why you couldn't actually send 3D printing commands from this setup. So you could actually, in theory, make 3D prints if you, if you were really dedicated from the Apple II. So maybe I'll try that in the future. So the story begins with the printer plotter artwork of Frida Nake. Frida Nake was one of the pioneers of printer plotter art. And in fact, his pictures are really beautiful. They have this amazing way of blending kind of the digital exploration with the more tangible feel of the pen and the ink and the paper, which is just a, really a beautiful thing that I love. So I'd set about kind of trying to create forgeries of some of his works, kind of reverse engineering them just to see the logic behind how the pictures came to be. And also so I could have some kind of Nake approximations of my own to put up in the apartment. And I was doing it on the screen of my Apple 2GS, but I thought it would be really fun to actually plot a print these works. And in fact, Apple made a printer plotter for the Apple II called the Apple 410 color plotter. And I thought, oh, I'd love to get my hands on one of these, but they're really hard to find. I looked and it's not like they're commonly available or anything like that. So I'd still love one of these. So if you've got, if you've got a lead on one of them or you'd like to post one to me, uh, you know, wishful thinking on my part, I'm sure, but please get in touch because I would love one of these plotters. In my research, I came across people who have adapted 3D printers to use as pen plotters. And it makes sense if you think about it because basically it's the same kind of machine. It just adds a Z axis to the drawing ability. And so this is the 3D printer that I got. It's an Ender 3 V2. This is a kind of entry level 3D printer and it's really good and surprisingly cheap for what it does. So that was a real treat. And it comes as a kit, you assemble it yourself and I set it up on Saturday and did a test print, which worked great. And on Sunday, by the end of Sunday, I already had it talking to my Apple II. So the process came together much more quickly than I thought it would. So the first thing that I did was I looked into, can I control this printer over serial from my Mac? Could I just send it a command and get it to move? And that's when I found out about G-Code. And G-Code is a plain text set of commands specifically for controlling these XY kind of machines like 3D printers and CNC machines and that kind of thing. And it's really easy to read and it's designed just to be sent over serial as text. So it's a super accessible thing and it made this process quite a bit easier because it meant that I could just find the right G code commands and send them over serial from my Apple II to the printer. So the next step was to stick a pen on the 3D printer and just try moving it around manually just to see if it was possible to cobble something together quickly to test this idea. And that worked well, although you'll notice that I'm using a blue pen here and that the pen at the start of the video was orange and that's because I absolutely destroyed this pen by going down instead of up by accident once. So thank you very much blue pen, you did an admirable job, thank you. The next thing I had to do was figure out a way to get the Apple II to talk to the 3D printer over serial. And the issue here is that the board rates of the two devices don't really match up neatly. So having the Apple II plugged directly into the 3D printer, for example, might lead to a kind of poor communication between the two devices. So what I figured I needed was some kind of machine in the middle 
for relaying the messages from the Apple II to the 3D printer. And I prototyped this in Unity, not because that would be the best place to make this kind of serial communication thing, in fact it's probably one of the worst places to do it, but just because I know Unity back to front and I knew that I could get something going really, really quickly. And I did, I got a open source Arduino library of GitHub and used that as the basis for a little tool that basically takes the message from the Apple II and then relays it to the 3D printer. It doesn't actually do anything to the message, it doesn't actually have any input into what the Apple II is saying to the printer, it only just passes that message on. So I was able to get the Apple II to talk to Unity, which in and of itself is exciting for me because it opens up a bunch of possibilities of fun development projects and things, so maybe there'll be some videos of that to come. And now that the Apple II is talking to Unity, it means that I can send my first test move of the printer from the Apple II. And I sent the move to home the printer and it worked. And I tell you, when the printer started moving after I hit the return key on the Apple II, that was such an exciting thing to see, like super exciting, because I knew at that point that I would be able to do drawings from the Apple II, which was really exciting. Once I had the basics of the system working, the next step was to actually start to write a more substantial basic program to actually send, you know, different drawing commands to the 3D printer so that then I could start to actually make art and make drawings. So the way this code works is it just has a bunch of variables that kind of initialize the pen position and the size of the things that we want to draw and that kind of thing. Then it has a drawing routine that essentially uses a bunch of subroutines that I wrote for doing simple things like drawing lines, drawing squares, moving the pen around, putting the pen up, putting the pen down, that kind of thing. And then it prints that information over serial and it also displays on the screen that information so you can see what moves are being made while it's being made. And this is written in BASIC. Um, so hopefully over time we'll be able to add more functionality to that library. And eventually when it's ready, I will definitely share that on GitHub. So if you want to try printing from your Apple II to your 3D printer, you can. So now that I've got that program written, I'm able to actually produce these fake nakes on the printer. And you can see that um, this is one of my first kind of test nakes, and it's looking pretty good. Obviously it's not spot on to the actual thing, uh, for chiefly because the, the real thing has multiple different colored pens, and that's a functionality that obviously my masking tape pen holder doesn't offer. So I think one of the next steps in the project is actually to, to, to 3D print a better pen holder that allows me to easily drop in and drop out pens, and has like a little bit of spring-loaded action just to make the pen glide a little bit more smoothly across the paper. And speaking of next steps, there's a bunch of different things that I would like to do that I can see already to continue this project. First and foremost, eventually it would be amazing to pull an actual 3D print from the Apple II. That would just be <laughs> great. And uh, I guess that's something that I can work towards with this project. I also want to continue developing my library of drawing commands in BASIC and also eventually in Apple Pascal so that I can um, share those on the internet and other people can connect their devices to their uh, Apple II and, and draw in this way. I'd also like to have an on-screen display of the plot as the printer plots it out so you can get a graphical user interface preview of the drawing that you're drawing. And of course I want to try and make as many cool drawings as I possibly can and, and just make art with this thing and have a really fun time tinkering and playing and producing prints. Another big thing that I'd like to do is port that serial bridge application over to an Arduino or another kind of similar device so that it doesn't depend upon the Apple II and the 3D printer being plugged into my Mac. It would be awesome to just build a three standing box that communicates what the Apple II wants to the 3D printer. And now that I have a 3D printer, I can of course print that box myself. So that's an exciting other project that comes out of this project. So as you can tell from that list, this is really just the beginning of this project. And there's plenty of fun things left to do. So there'll definitely be a part two. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to subscribe so that you can see it when it comes out, whenever, whenever it's ready. I've, I've had such a fun time making this contraption work and I really want to keep going with it and, and see where I can get it to. 
Also, if you've enjoyed this video, you might like some of the other videos on my channel. I do like to kind of play around with these kind of more kind of niche, weird, bizarre tech projects. I just have a really fun time doing it. So yeah, subscribe, leave a comment if you've got an Apple 410 color plotter or if you've got anything you want to say about this video or any thoughts on the project, would love to hear it. Or even just have you made any fun prints from your Apple II? I love to hear about what other people are doing as well. So thanks very much for watching. M A X.